I think it's important to have a clean working environment and I try, but I don't always succeed. Yeah, cable management has always been the weakest part of my setup. So today we're gonna look above the desk. And by the way, if you're looking for a clean, polished desk setup video, there are lots of those on YouTube. But today I wanna show you my actual real setup that I will use as a software developer working with Mac OS, Windows and Linux, and also as a video maker for all the things that you see here. I also make video courses, so multiple environments is a kind of setup that I need to have. Now I've changed quite a bit, so I've split this video up into things that are brand new to me, things that I've decided to remove, and things that I decided to keep the same from my previous years. We're gonna kick things off with a brand new desk. I love this desk for 12 or 13 years now, but lately it rubs me the wrong way. One of the perks of having a YouTube channel is that desk companies often offer to send me their desks. It's great, but since space is limited, I have to be selective. I've checked out a ton of standing desks, but when Vernal reached out, I knew this was gonna be the one. It not only had great specs, but what really sold me are the modular attachments. I'm always changing my setup, and I don't always need a massive 72 inch desk like my old one. But with this Vernal desk I got, I can adjust the length anywhere from 60 to 84 inches using extensions on either side. Vernal calls this the setup in one system. It's not just a desk, it's a modular system designed to meet different office needs while maintaining a consistent look. And the desk accessories, if you get those, they match perfectly with the desktop, creating a clean, unified look that's hard to find with other brands. Now the desk itself comes in multiple finishes like walnut, light walnut, bamboo, and white, but I chose white because, well, I showcase a lot of gadgets on my desk. The white finish helps everything stand out and keep the setup looking clean on camera. That's pretty much it. Otherwise, it's probably gonna get dirtier faster, so I might have to spend a little extra time cleaning it every week, but that's that's in my calendar now. Clean desk. Beyond aesthetics, this desk is incredibly stable. So that addresses the common issue of wobbling associated with standing desks, especially ones that go this high. The frame desktop integration also means that the assembly is really quick and hassle-free. It's perfect for somebody like me who doesn't wanna spend hours setting it up. In fact, this was the easiest desk I've ever set up. I need a very flexible space because I change so often. My main machine is a MacBook Pro, and on the left is my Mac OS setup. That'll be an extra monitor for my MacBook Pro. On the right side is a hot station with a few mini machines and whatever else I happen to be testing, other laptops and so on. These will be used in my home server setup and for Windows and Linux-based programming. First up, I have a brand new monitor and it's the biggest one that I've personally ever used. It's a BenQ 32 inch programming monitor. The best monitor for programming, ultimate coding productivity. I've already showed two of these on the channel, 24 and 28 inch. This is the 32 inch, it's pretty big. Now I made a dedicated video about the benefits of the RD series monitors from BenQ, and that was the 28 inch version, which I'm still using in my other office. So I know I like the quality, the eye care features and display size, except now I have an even larger monitor so I can fit even more on it. The one downside is that it's only 60 Hertz. And that's something that a lot of people are looking to change these days. They're looking to get into a 120 Hertz refresh rate and that's, something that's supported on Macs now, on MacBook Pros, it's called ProMotion. So having to go back to 60 Hertz could be annoying to some people, it depends on what kind of thing you're doing. One thing I didn't mention in my previous video, which I'll link to down below by the way, is that these monitors have a built-in power supply. So that means a regular computer cable and no wall warts or power bricks. And this one also comes with a really heavy duty arm. Ever since I started using monitor arms a couple of years back, I just can't go back to having a stand. Monitor arms are such a space Saver. Look at my desk. Look at all the space I have. This monitor is just floating here and I can put stuff under it. My old arms though were pretty difficult to move and they only supported one monitor. I've upgraded. Even though I'm only putting one monitor on this arm, it can hold two monitors comfortably, either side to side or one on top of another. I was so excited that I bought two of them on Amazon. I'll link to them down below because I can see myself very soon having four monitors up here for doing some testing or whatever. You'll probably see that on the channel very soon. Now, I'm upgrading from my M2 Max MacBook Pro to the M4 Max MacBook Pro. And because I'm doing that, it comes with Thunderbolt 5. So I'm also changing my dock. And this is one of the first, if not the first one available out there. I just grabbed one as soon as it became on sale. And then Kensington went out and sent me one as well. This is a Thunderbolt 5 dock and it can support up to three 
monitors. I have a separate video coming out testing this dock, but now this is gonna live on my desk and has a micro SD card reader and an SD card reader, headphone jack, USB, and a 2.5 gigabit ethernet connection, which is what I've been using the last few months. And I love the fast speed. <sighs> I don't know, what's next, five? 10, we'll see. So on my bedside table at home, I use a MagSafe iPhone charger, which charges while also tilting the phone towards me at an angle. And I wanted something like that for my office too. So Basis sent me this adjustable stand called the Nomos. And this is way better than the one I have at home because not only is it the world's first five-in-one desktop charger with Qi 2 wireless charging, but it's got a built-in 100-watt retractable USB-C cable so my desk can still be neat. All right, let's see. Quick start guide. Oh, here it is. Listen to that. Oh, it's pretty. Did I mention it's got a retractable cable? <laughs> That's really cool. They said that they tested the retraction action with 10,000 pull tests. Should I try that? No, I got other things to test. That's their whole shtick, by the way. They even have a slogan. Simply pull, snap on, power all. So that tracks, I guess. I always have a ton of things on my desk to plug in and charge, and I don't wanna use my hub for that because those are Thunderbolt connections, valuable Thunderbolt connections. So this is kind of perfect because it can charge five devices at the same time. And it does that with a PD 3.1. And this one's got 140 watts of power. And that's perfect for my MacBook, Oh, uh, which is at 8%. Oops. <laughs> All right, let's plug this in. Okay, there it goes. And it's charging. And a couple of other gadgets, like this MacBook, my phone, and my Android dev phone too. And there they go, they're all being charged right now. And the little screen is showing me exactly what's happening and how much power is going to the devices. So, a nice little addition to my desk. Let's also not forget that we can charge the iPhone wired or wirelessly. It'll do both. This is definitely how I'll do it on my desk. So on this side, it's usually my flex station. That's where I have my Windows PC. And sometimes I have Macs and other machines I'm testing out and trying out. So right now I've got the uh, B-Link Sear 8 and the GMK Tech K8 Plus. Both of them have the same Ryzen chip inside of them, the Ryzen 7 8845HS, and they're in the same price range as the new Mac Minis that are around 600 bucks. I'm kind of uh, working on that and gonna make a video about that, of course because I think we need to figure out the actual performance differences, but that's for a different video. Getting ahead of myself here. Here is where I need your help. Usually you watch me for giving you information. This time around, I'm open to suggestions in the comments. And here's where my problem lies. I have um, these keyboards that I've been using, and I really like this one. This is the Keychron Q1. It's been my favorite one for the past, oh, I don't know, probably half a year I've been using it. Really like how that sounds. I've also started testing the K2HE. This is the magnetic keyboard. So I'm gonna set that right there because sometimes that can also be used as a testing station. Anyway, what I want is to have some way to be able to switch between the different computers with the same keyboard. And I've tested a bunch of gear here, but I've never tested KVMs. Besides the one that's built right into the monitor, I don't have a dedicated KVM and I need one for this side. So if you have any suggestions, put them in the comments. Thank you. So even though I've already had this machine, I'm gonna consider this as part of the new thing that's on my desk because for the longest time in my career as a software developer, I've only been using the built-in one on the laptop or whatever Dell sends with theirs back in the day. Actually, I, I still have it, <laughs> this one. Yeah, sometimes I still use this, believe it or not. But mechanical keyboards is something I recently got into. Now let's move on to things I got rid of. And you might've been noticing in the last, I don't know how many videos, but for a while now, actually it's been almost a year that I have not had a permanent chair in this office. I kind of like the freedom of moving around, being able to go to different parts of my desk if I need to. And I feel stronger standing all day instead of sitting all day. Now, theoretically, you're supposed to be able to stand and sit, which I can do, you know, with this, setup that I have here. Everything is mounted to the desk. 
so everything's gonna go up with the desk and down with the desk and the wires are kind of floating that kind of explains the little mess i got going on there but there's no explanation for that i need to fix that i got rid of a permanent chair for long coding sessions i do like to sit down so i do that at starbucks my office away from the office and i've also removed speakers i used to have two large speakers on the edge of my desk they were the krk v8s really good set of monitors but since i mostly use the macbook pro now the 16 inch it has such incredible speakers in it that i really didn't feel like i needed an external set of speakers now i used to do music production as well not so much anymore so for that you do probably need a dedicated set of speakers but for what i'm doing for this purpose right here these speakers are just fine for listening to music as well now if i really need to listen closely i will use a pair of headphones like this these are more like studio monitors than headphones but this is the biodynamic 297 kit that i bought many years ago and i do all my video course recordings on this this has a built-in really good microphone it's a condenser mic and really good headphones as well so whenever i'm doing recording of courses i will put that on the desk to have it handy but it's not typically on my desk these days now, speaking of that kind of gear, I do have a bunch of other gear in here that I've kept uh, throughout the year and I'm keeping going forward, but it's kind of not related to a desk setup for software development or doing this kind of technical home server stuff. And things that I'm talking about are audio gear, camera gear, and lighting. That is all staying the same and that is a whole different world and I'd be happy to share that information in another video. Uh, let me know if you're interested in that. One thing that I did keep that I had to absolutely have and that's related to this desk setup is my hdmi and audio patch bay here this is a bit of a customization of the desk if you will because i attach it to the desk from below and it allows me to easily switch hdmi in and out coming in from different devices that I'm recording, whether it's recording screens or routing different HDMI things into my recorder. And this is the ATM Mini Extreme ISO. It does a recording. That's how I get these multi-camera things all recorded at the same time. And it's also pretty useful for live streaming. Sometimes I do do that as well. And because this customization sticks out so far into my standing space or sitting space, if I had a chair in here, I kind of moved over this little part right here this is the desk height control and instead of attaching it directly to the desk i've attached it to this rack that i have floating down here check back with me in a year or so to see how these things are doing and how my desk is progressing it is a white desk i promise to clean it but we'll see thanks so much for watching i'm sure i might have forgotten a couple things here or there so let me know in the comments down below what else you see in here that you want to know about and i will see you in the next one have a good one folks